Doing well. Are your moms happy today? Yes. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> some of you were like, yes, I am happy. And some of you were like, woohoo, it's Mother's Day. Woo! Like already like getting the party started. Um, I have my lovely wife, Danny, up here. If you can all clap for a, an inordinate amount of time. You might not know this, but I myself am not a mother. What? Yeah, it's true. Whatever rumors you've heard. Um, but Danny is a mother. And so I thought that if we were going to talk about motherhood, we were going to talk about what it means to be a mom, that we probably ought to bring an expert up here and not have me wax eloquent about it for um, the next half an hour, because most of you would be saying, what the heck do you know about motherhood? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I don't. <laughs> um, but to me, the, the really what the, the value of a mom, the, the idea of the patience of a mother, the long suffering, the ability to like, put up with the ups and downs of life and what children bring into your life all came like crystal clear to me in one moment when I was like 10 years old. We lived at this house in Medford and up in the kitchen, uh, there was like a, a hole uh, in the wall, like an opening behind, beyond the sink. And then the family room was kind of down a couple of steps. And my mom was sitting down there in a chair, like a recliner doing something. She was working on something or whatever. And I was up at the sink. And I had this photograph, and I don't know what the photograph was. I, this is back before like digital pictures were a thing. Do you guys remember actually having to go down and develop your film? And you get like 50 pictures back, and you find out they're all bad because you couldn't preview them. You know what I'm saying? You just took the shot, and then you go develop, and you're like, bad, 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 bad. OK, throw the whole thing away. Well, we had a photo, and I have no idea why I was looking at it. but. When you're ten, a 10 year old boy, you do things that have zero reason. They're like anti-reason, right? Exactly, I don't know who's yelling back there, but okay, that's Micah. Like, so I take this photograph and I'm like, well, I'm done looking at this. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, uh-oh. You know where it went, don't you? <laughs> right to mom. I have no idea, but I'm like, I'm done looking at that, woo, I just, flung it like a card. I mean, what came over me? I was like a gambler in a casino. Like, yeah, baby needs a new pair of shoes. And I like threw it. And it, of course, slow motion, you know when you something leaves your hand and you know this is gonna end up poorly. This was a bad decision. I wish I could take this back. This photograph like goes out like a Australian boomerang. It's like flying, you know, like goes in this big, huge arc and like a ninja star. It comes up and my mom looks up and it just goes, wham! the corner of the photo directly in her eye. What? <laughs> you could not repeat that if you tried a million times. Like you could not do that again. It was like the most like big, huge curve right as she looks up, perfect timing, wham, right in the eye. Now, dads, men, guys, if that happened to you, it's like, watch out. We're like flipping tables over, like punching out drywall. I mean, like hooting and hollering. It's like, what on earth are you doing? My mom was like this. She was like, ow. Anyway, right back to what she was doing. And I was like, what? You should have killed me. Like, why, why, why did you let this slide? Why, why on earth would you just be like, ow, okay, I'm done. You know, that's it. There's pain in my eye. There's like a razor sharp picture smashing me in the eye and, and I'm just right back to normal life. And I was like, at that point, I was like, I deserve death. I deserve hellfire. I deserve like shooting squad, you know, like the firing squad, execution. Like I, that was the dumbest thing and it hurt somebody else for no reason. And my mom had enough patience to just go right back into just whatever she was doing. And I was like, okay, I, there's, there's a gear here that you have as a mom, as a woman, as uh, someone who is raising morons like me, that you could just take that in stride and just keep on, <laughs> keep on going. There is something about motherhood that I don't understand, that most of us don't understand, and I don't want to try to explain my take on it. I want to hear from the words of my wife and the mother of my children, because I think a lot of you will probably resound with what she has to say about raising kids, about appreciation, about um, really what it, what it means to be appreciated and thought of. Um, ladies, I'm sure that you'll probably be able to bear witness with what she's saying. And men, you as well, please listen up. This is 
so much about you as well. If you're a, if you're a father, if you're looking to be a father, if you're a, if you're a husband, if you're looking to be a good man that is attractive to the other sex, that should be all of you, <laughs> um, then listen up. I, Danny has some great things to say. And so I'm just going to ask her a couple of questions and uh, she's going to incriminate me by telling me all the things that I do poorly. To, but, um, but you guys will have a great time. I'll just wither up here, but everything's going to be wonderful. So, hi, babe. Can I just say, <laughs> real quick, I keep on like kind of lifting my mic to, and I got to stick with the outline. Um, <laughs> your mom, that's nice because that would not have been me. I would have. It wouldn't have been me either. <laughs> She's got patience, but like that's not me. I would have responded differently. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. Maybe your I mom know. should be sitting here. She's not. So <laughs> I know. Just kidding. I, I I'm wait just kidding. to heap praises on her until she's not here. But anyway, so the question that I have, I mean, something I think that you could probably talk about for quite a while is, as a mom, raising kids, doing as much work as you do, which is a lot. What is it? What are the types of things that make you feel like this is worth it? That make you feel appreciated? That make you feel like I I'm giving and I'm working and I'm doing, but these people, that's what that's what your family is called when you're mad at them. Those people. Not that Danny ever gets mad at us. Um, what types of things make me feel appreciated? Feel like noticed? Feel seen? Um, I think just recognizing um, that little things go a long way. Um, and so when you're, as a mom, busy at home and you're, um, whether your kids are going to school, whether you homeschool, um, whatever your situation looks like, if you work, um, you're busy because God put that in us as women is to care for and to nurture and to um, do those things for the family. But little things, little thank you so much, flowers once in a while, actually noticing that it's Mother's Day coming up. And it doesn't have to be a big, I bought you a diamond ring. No, it has to just be like, hey, I got you this card and I picked these flowers from the yard. And you're just like, wow. Neighbor's yard. Whatever yard. Like, I'm sure your neighbors will understand. I picked you this overgrown grass from our yard. That's different. No. Grass is beautiful, but it has a purpose. Anyway, um, but little things. I think little things go a long way. Thank yous. A call in the middle of your work day to say, hey, just want to let you know I'm thinking about you. And I know you're busy, but I love you. You know, little, very little things. Uh, like that, I think, make me feel like, man, I'm appreciated, and my husband notices me. My family notices me. If you're not married, it could be, um, you know, a little bit different as a mom, but um, for you to recognize your mom and say, man, you've done a lot. You did a lot. Um, you're doing a lot, and, you know, oftentimes moms just are doing a lot because that is the gear that God has given them to run in and they are going wild. They're going crazy. So little things I think matter the most. Yeah. It's great to know because a lot of guys are probably like little things don't matter to me. <laughs> hey, uh, Bob, I just uh, called in the middle of the day just to, um, tell you I'm thinking about you. <laughs> Never call me again, Aaron. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's probably for the best. Don't call me. Huh? Yeah, guys can probably, I mean, relate to that. Sometimes that is not like the, it's not on the forefront of our mind. And so, um, well, I, I think guys think, oh, she knows. She knows yeah. I love her. I she knows I'm payment. thinking about her. Yeah, they're very processed. Like, well, my wife should just know that. But your wife needs to hear that. She needs to see that. She needs you to slow her down a little bit and recognize her. And that's. Yeah, and obviously not every guy is this way. Not, and yeah. some guys are more sensitive and, and whatever. But, yeah. um, I mean, that's news to me, especially when you're like the small things go a long way and I don't have to buy a diamond ring. That's pretty good news. I'm actually excited to hear that. So it's good. I'm going to jot that one down and remember that because, you know, a Hallmark instead of the, the uh, uh, diamonds. Anyway. <laughs> you can buy me a diamond. I'm not saying that. I'm just kidding. Um, 
That's, that's great to know. Question number two, what makes you feel unappreciated? The inverse of that, what kind of things make you feel ignored or make you feel like uh, um, you haven't been noticed, you haven't been seen, you haven't, you know, you're invisible, all of your work is, is hidden, it's, it's, not, it's not valued. Well, it's hard because on Mother's Day, we're, we're speaking about mothers and we're speaking truth because this really is a real thing. And um, mothers are, <clears throat> excuse me, um, oftentimes just not noticed for every single thing that they do. Uh, but guys, you are doing a great job. And this is just an encouragement to say, you know, hey, am I doing a great job? Sorry, what areas can I get better in? Am I doing that? Awesome. And if you are, that's great. I don't want to like sit up here and be like, well, you're not doing this and this is what we want. And I don't want it to come across like that because there are a lot of men that do a very, very good job. And so here my heart in that. Um, and so the question is, okay, yeah. So probably just feeling invisible, you know, feeling like, I'm doing it all, and especially like at night, dinner's cooked, or it could be breakfast, mom is cleaning it, she's preparing it, she's making it, she's cleaning up after it, she's oftentimes not at the same time at the table with the family, she's cleaning, you know, she can't relax with the family, and then you see the family out there, and you're, they're watching TV, or having fun, or watching dad on the phone, watching funny games, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm just in here. Some other just, dad, right? Some other dad. Okay. This has never happened between us, ever, <laughs> ever. Um, but, you know, you you get yourself so angry in, into that, you know, mode of just, like, no one even cares. I'm doing all of this. No one cares at all. He's having fun with the kids. They're playing games. Don't worry. Mom's got it. Don't worry. I still have to do laundry later tonight after you guys go to bed. I got to fold it. No, don't worry. You won't even notice. You won't even see. So that's the danger is that you can talk. I mean, I've been there. So I hope all you moms have been there. Otherwise, I'm crazy. But you're in the kitchen and you are red, red, like fiery, like angry. A conversation needs to take place. But oftentimes those conversations do not take place. And mom remains angry and Five years down the road, mom blows up and goes crazy and leaves the family. That really happens. And that's terrifying. And that's just for like a mom and dad, married family, whatever. If you're a single mom, you are doing everything. You are going above and beyond. And when kids are toddlers, they're not thanking you. They're not appreciating. I mean, they love you. And they're like, I love you, mommy. And that's enough. And thank God that fills your cup when they're toddlers and you're doing it alone, but single moms, you're amazing. You're doing that all by yourself. Moms uh, that are doing it because they've lost a spouse or, um, you know, moms that are alone or maybe you lost your husband and your kids are grown and, you know, there's just so many different phases to motherhood, but um, being invisible and just feeling like you're taking it on all by yourself, it, you just, it's unappreciation on top of unappreciation. And you can just talk and let you know, that narrative play in your head that like, nobody cares. This is stupid. Why am I doing this? Why am I, you know, but um, it, it reminds me of a story in the Bible. Um, Martha and Mary, you guys have all probably heard a little bit about this story. If you haven't, it's found in the book of Luke chapter 10, 38. I'm just going to read it really quick. Um, it says, I'm going to do 38 through 42. And it says, as Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught, but Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. How many of you have been there where you're like, hey, they're not doing nothing. I'm doing everything. Just tell them to like, you know, do something. And the Lord said to Martha, my dear Martha, you are worried and set, upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. 
and that was sitting, right? So it comes down to the setting, which Martha was distracted by the setting, right? The many, many things which we do all the time. I'm so guilty of it versus the sitting. So setting versus the sitting. That's the main thing I want to point out. We have to get to a point where we, we are able to sit as moms. We're able to understand that it, we are appreciated. Um, you know, Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus, and Martha, she was busy, busy with her hands, but the Lord cares about our heart, right? That's what's most important is that relationship with God, the heart, that connection, the fellowship. Um, and I just have three uh, different ways, you know, just that I have discovered over the years so that I don't boil over and go crazy. Um, can I give them to you really quick? Sorry, I'm taking forever. Um, the first one is take care of you. Moms, take care of you. Like you have to find time and you have to make room, whether it's a walk in the morning by yourself, whether it's you're, you're fighting for that time in the morning or late at night where you get to read your book and it's quiet and it's still and please let your kids have a bedtime. Just let them and make them and force them because those are those moments that you have to refill. You have to sit. You have to find time for that and you have to fight for that. It's hard. Uh, but it has to be priority. And the second one, be honest early. Be honest early on. Let your husband know, you, I feel invisible. You know, I feel like no one cares. And your husband will probably be like, holy moly, oh, whoa. But you communicate that, you say, I can't keep up. And sometimes husbands are gone quite often because it's their job. That's what they do. But you have, for the health of your marriage, for the health of your family, for what you guys are called to do as a family, you have to communicate early on. Be honest and say, hey, I'm struggling here. Like, I'm struggling. I saw this thing on Facebook the other day, and I know I'm not going to remember it because I'm standing up in front of all of you guys, but it said um, something like depression doesn't look like dying, and it had this hand that was going under the water. Or I can't remember exactly the phrase, but it just went on to kind of say it doesn't look like someone's drowning when they're drowning. And sometimes you, in, in order for you to be on or for the whole thing to just, for your husband to know, he's not going to notice you drowning. Sometimes it looks like you're having fun. You have to reach out and say, hey, I'm drowning. Like, this is too much for me. And you guys have to figure out, you have to organize what's going to be best for our family. What's that going to look like? Okay, you work here, here, and here. Guess what? Family night here. Nothing comes in the way of that. Or the kids, Aaron did a great thing. It was amazing. He's like, okay, guys, dinner's done. You guys all clean the kitchen for mom, and she just gets to go do whatever she wants to do. And I, the first time I was like, they're not going to do it right. They're, I'm sorry. I'll tell them to quit. They are not going to do it right. And they are going to scratch like everything. And now we're in a new house. And I'm like, no, actually, but I need to let them. You have to let them help you. And it may not be perfect, but you have to take the help, especially when you cry out for it. Because then nobody's going to give you help when you really, really need it. And so... Number two, be honest early. And the third one, I just want to remind you guys that the Lord sees you. He sees everything that you do as moms. He hears every cry of your heart. Even when you're verbally not talking, the Lord sees you. And he, he knows the heaviness that you're carrying. He knows you feel unseen. But it's so important to communicate that, that to others around you to get that help. And the Lord is going to help you through it, and he's going to bless you. And there's a great scripture. I don't know if I wrote it down, but it's in um, Proverbs. Yeah, hello, Proverbs 31. Um, and it just talks about um, the amazing wife, the amazing mom. We all strive to be her. It's insane that she does so many amazing things. But it's a great model to follow after. But at the very end of Proverbs 31, it says, Her children rise up and call her blessed, also her husband. And sticking in the scriptures are going to be deposits into your soul's as, soul as a mom. 
just making sure you are making time for that, not just coming to church and kind of going through the motions, but that you are letting the Lord hear your heart, verbally speaking to him, whether you're speaking in your brain or you're actually speaking out loud and you have a prayer closet, that's great. Settle down, sit. You have to make time for that. The big picture for moms is that you it might a lot of things might go unnoticed, but no one can raise your kids as well as you. And everyone has to remember that. You're raising world changers. You're raising the future. You get this awesome opportunity and I'm so excited. I have four kids. And it might seem overwhelming at times, but I have to remind myself kids are a gift from the Lord. And I'm so blessed to have kids. Whatever your situation looks like, you have to be encouraged through God that I get to do this. This is exciting. I get to speak to my kids. I get to have relationship with my kids. My kids might not like the decisions that I make for my house, but it's what I'm going to make because I'm going to train them up and the way that they should go, right? So that when they were old, they're old, they're teenagers, and they're in their 20s, and they're getting married, they're not going to depart from it. It's going to be hidden in their heart. And so moms, it's heavy. And dads, it's heavy. Um, Everyone, just remember that there's no one like a mom. But it's such an exciting role. Like, I love being a mom. And so I just want to encourage you guys, don't feel like it's this heavy, overwhelming thing because the, the families should be in the house of God. This is what church is for. We're a family. Me and like all the other ladies in here, we're going to link arms with you guys, with all the moms and the ladies. Maybe you feel alone. Maybe you are a single mom. Guess what? We're going to link arms and we're going to say, no, not today, Satan, because we are charging forward. We are raising these kids. They are going to be history makers and world changers, and they are going to be people that change the world. So that's what I got to say. I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry. Oh, man. I'm going to get fired. You're up here like laying it down, preaching. Shoot, (laughs) y'all. That's great. Um, That's super informative for me to hear as a man and husband and and father, Um, even just your kind of your application takeaways, taking time for yourself. That sounds like it it will cost me, and it will. But it's important. Mm -hmm. I need to have the forethought. I need to cough up the money. I need to say, why don't you go choose an activity, take some time, go out with your friends or go get alone or whatever you need to do and take some time to sit. Yeah. Take some time to go to the spa. Take some time to rotate the tires or change the oil, you know, stack those cinder blocks like I've been telling you, you know, um, that, that all of you ladies, when she say that says, you know, take some time for yourself, you're like, yeah, yeah, that means something. All you guys are like, oh, man, time for yourself. What if I can't go golfing? Ah, shoot. (laughs) Can I just say something, too? No. I know. I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, It's hard to ask for help. And if you're a single mom, uh, I've dealt with serious trust issues with my kids. I'm like, no, actually, you're not good enough to watch my child. You know, Uh, that's a real thing. But you have to find, that's why I believe the church is just such a safe place, should be a safe place. We take it very seriously, safety, and just um, modeling what that looks like, being there for each other. Moms, if you're a single mom, reach out. Reach out and just say, hey, I need somebody to watch my kids because I'm drowning, you know? I, I need somebody, I need somebody to come alongside me. I need help. And that, that is what the church does for each other because we understand that she needs a break. She needs a pause. She needs a timeout. And just three hours in Target, one to three hours in Target, or... It'd be cheaper to just get you the diamonds. That's true. Your choice, whatever. Uh, anyways, it, mom's souls, they get so refreshed just by a timeout. I just say, I need a timeout. Sometimes Aaron looks at me and he's like, you need a timeout. I'm like, yes, I do. All y'all are going to go down if I do not get a timeout. But I've been there. I've been in the closet. I've been there with three, four kids under the age of five just weeping because I don't know how to receive help. And I don't know how to ask for it. And I want to be able to be the woman that can just be superwoman and do it all. But I'm not supposed to do it all. 
I and need that's help. that's kind of your second point is to be yeah. honest early and to like really explain where you're at. And guys, I mean, it, we can listen very, very, very closely to the transmission in our car. Well, there's a little bit of a click between second and third, you know, but oftentimes our wife, her face, her voice, her attitude, her demeanor is saying something, but we don't pick up on it quite so much. And, and so um, having the grace to just, when she says, I'm drowning, or I need some time, or can I do this, or can I, it's, it's, it's very, very wise to listen and say, if she's talking to me at all about this, it's probably, she's throwing me a, she's throwing me a pretty strong signal, and I probably ought to pick up on it for her health, and as an extension for my health and safety and life to continue to, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And obviously a lot of um, all of this that we're talking about and Danny's talking about is in the context of, of marriage and husband and wife and father and mother. And we are well aware that there are a lot of you ladies who are raising children on your own. There are single moms. Uh, it happens a lot and for various reasons. Sometimes it's both of your fault and sometimes that you just are abandoned and so, you know, who knows, there's all kinds of different experiences. And we just want you to know that we believe that the church, like Danny was saying, is a family. It's supposed to provide family that you might be lacking. It might be absent to you. You might to need to reach out to other ladies or even other families in the church to get some help, to get a break, to get someone else to just to notice you, to appreciate you. And we want to be that for you. Whoever you are, whatever it is that you need, we want to help provide that. So please reach out, talk, be honest, um, talk to some of the ladies and let people know where you're at because it's a very, very important thing. But um, in just a moment, we're going to uh, actually show by giving all of you moms here um, a, a gift to show just how much you're appreciated. But first, before we do that, we just want to give each person in the room the opportunity to know God. The primary thing that we do as a church, really the the big domino that that kind of controls all of the other things in our life, um, whether it's family issues or communication and sin stuff, really the, the, the big thing, the main thing, the fundamental thing that kind of changes everything else is knowing God, is being reconciled to God. And you might be here today and you say, I, I don't know God or I don't know anything about God or I knew something about God as a child. I went to church and, and it was kind of in my my past or whatever that looks like, but we want to give the opportunity every week, every Sunday, every time that people come into this place, and you might have gone to church for a long time. You might have a lot of church background. You might have grown up in the church or be a church kid or a pastor's kid or whatever that might look like. And yeah, I know all the answers and I know, yeah, this is the Old Testament and Jesus did this and whatever, but to you, it's really not life. It hasn't landed in your heart in a way that's dynamic, that has, that has taken you from darkness to light, from death to life. It's just kind of some words that I put on the, on the page. It's just some kind of thing that I, I said when I was young and now I'm in the club, now I'm a Christian. Well, maybe, but I really think that there's a lot more to Christianity. There's a lot more to our faith than that. I think religion and the idea of faith kind of gets portrayed as this kind of boring or wordy or um, kind of abstract kind of idea. I don't think it is. The Bible portrays God as the author of life. The author of life. Everything in your life that's good, everything that is wholesome and pure and right, everything that's exciting, everything that's joyful, your your destiny, your future, go, going somewhere, doing something, becoming somebody, everything that that it has anything to do with life, real life. God is the author of that. God is not boring. Faith is not boring. Christ is not boring. The gospel, I mean, it, it's, what, it's what cures boredom. It's what cures brokenness. It's what cures our sin problem. Uh, it says in, in, in the New Testament that, that God, Jesus came because, I mean, for the purpose of the ministry of reconciliation, of bringing us back. The gospel message is that originally God created us to be a certain way. He created us to experience life all the time in perfection. He created us to have 
abundant life, for everything to be right, everything to be perfect. We don't have hangups. We don't have addictions. We don't have baggage. We don't have that embarrassing stuff from last year or back in my past and that stuff that I drag along with me wherever I go that I can't stop thinking about that haunts me at night. We weren't meant to live that way. Originally, the purpose of, of creating humankind was so that we could have relationship with God. And the Bible portrays that relationship as a father with their child. Maybe you had a horrible relationship with your father. Maybe you didn't have any relationship. Maybe, who knows? Everyone has a different background, different experience. But really what we want to make sure happens every week is that you know that God wants to be your father. God wants to be reconciled. He wants you to be reconciled, meaning coming back, coming to him. And I can tell you what most of us think most of the time. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, most of us think, I'm not good enough. I'm a bad person. I've, I've done wrong things. Everyone thinks I'm this good guy or this good gal, and really I know the, the sin in my own heart. The gospel message is that Jesus Christ was willing to take on all sin and all shame and to become sin, to become a curse for our sake, to stand in the place of judgment that we deserve. Our reaction to that shouldn't be, eh, okay, cool. Our reaction to that should be, oh my word, somebody would take my punishment. Somebody would take the wrath that I deserve. Somebody would take the shame. Those horrible feelings of the things that I've done and they'd make me clean. That's what Jesus promises to do for you and for me. And if you haven't given your heart to God, if you haven't invited God to come onto the inside of you and live within you for his spirit, his life to make you new, I want to pray that that happens today. And if that's you, I'd invite you to just say this prayer after me. Um, it's not really complex. Uh, you don't have to scream it. You don't have to write it down in a book uh, 75 times before it means anything. What you have to do is mean it from your heart. You have to say it and mean it and believe that God is who he says he is, that he sent his son Jesus, the perfect God-man, in the flesh to die for our sins because that's what we deserve and instead give us life and to make us whole and to be reconciled to God. You might say, well, I'm not going to be just perfect overnight. Well, you, you probably won't be. You probably won't know how to just act perfectly, and that's okay. But positionally, before God, when you say, God, apply Christ's merit. Apply what Christ deserves to me, and I'll take it. Immediately, God says, that person is perfect. I see that person through the, through the context of my son, Jesus Christ, and he's perfect. And if that's you, and you say, I long to be washed clean. I long to be a different sort of person. I long to have a different sort of heart. I long to have different intentions. I want different longings. I want to be God's. I'm here to tell you that that can be the case, that God is willing to get into your life, even if it's messy, and to begin to change the way you think and the way you live. If that's you, I'd invite you to just pray this after me. Dear Father, Thank you that you would send your son, the perfect God-man, to take on my shame, my death, my sin. I know I don't deserve it. I know that I could never earn it. But if you'll give me salvation, if you'll save me, if you'll cleanse me, if you'll make me alive by your spirit, I accept. Do what you want to do. Wash me by the blood of Jesus. Take my sin and my shame, and I'll be yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I'm just going to pray a, a general prayer over all of you moms and uh after, after we're done, uh, we'll just turn the music up a little bit, and all of you can just come on down, have some time chatting and uh, grabbing your, your gift down here. But um, 
I want to pray for you first because what you do is so important and it is hugely appreciated. Um, you might not hear that a lot. You might not have somebody in your life who says that a lot, but we want to say that. We appreciate what you do. There's a lot of things that you do that go unseen. There's a lot of things that you do that don't get thanked. There's a lot of things that seem like they're just routine, but if those things didn't get done, the world would be a whole lot worse. <laughs> I'd like to pray for you. God, thank you so much for moms. Thank you that you respect motherhood. You care. Thank you so much for what they do. Thank you that they sacrifice so much. God, they're not begging for attention and yelling and screaming. But Father, I pray that you help guard and protect against them slowly sinking into just a fog of unappreciation and invisibility. They do so much. They raise children, literally raising the future. God, they, they turn houses into homes. Father, they care about so many people other than just themselves. God, I pray that you'd give each woman here, each mom, grace and strength. I pray that you'd remind them that you see and you notice and you care and you're proud that they're doing your work. God, thank you so much for each mom. I pray that they'd have a great day of rest today and that those people in their lives would provide delicious food and many gifts. In Jesus' name, amen.